See, since it's my son's birthday, I'm going to teach him some of my secrets. One of my secrets is voodoo. Black magic. This is what a typical voodoo ritual looks like in your name. But based on pop culture depictions, you might think voodoo is all about human sacrifice and putting curses on people. <laughs> Stigma plagues Buddha believers. A Buddha priest has been spending years trying to demystify her faith. What's the actual source of all the stigma towards Buddha? You know, when the stigma started, when Europeans started to come to Africa, the Catholic Europeans, you know, when they came here, they saw the sort of unity between us. And then they know that Africans, they are very strong people. How can we fragilize them? How can we take over? <laughs> and we start to tell them that the Boom. world that we are worshiping is evil. <laughs> Get away from me with that and evil. How it the court official we use voodoo to keep the evil away. In 2020, a seven-year-old girl was kidnapped and killed in an incident many attributed to the religion, but worshippers at Basuza dismiss any link. Blood sacrifice is pretty central to voodoo. Yeah. But there's also the association with human sacrifice, ritual crimes. How do you grapple with that as a voodoo believer? We don't sacrifice human beings for voodoo. It happens in the old days. But not now. Voodoo is not negative. Witchcraft is different from Voodoo. Witchcraft is the power that people have to fly, to turn themselves into birds or cats or something different. To come to your house, take your soul, make you sick. They can even turn somebody's soul into a goat or chicken and eat it. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. You've seen mm -hmm. a bird mm -hmm. turn into a human? Yes. And it's because of those people that we are working very hard because we need to protect people. And Tom, my deity here, Tom is always fighting the evil people. Voodoo's reach is global. There are an estimated 30 million Buddha believers just in West Africa, and even more anywhere else with the history of slavery. All the people who were taken, who were enslaved, they had their own religion. And today, in New Orleans, in Cuba, in Haiti, in Brazil, in Black America, we have voodoo there today. Because of whom? Because of those people who left. Every general term, we have to remember them. <laughs> and he honors that history with an annual voodoo festival which wouldn't have been possible 30 years ago. Voodoo worship was suppressed by France and all its African and Caribbean colonies, driving it underground even after independence. This had a lasting impact in Benin. Voodoo is a recognized official religion here alongside Christianity and Islam but only 11% of the population identify as beauty believers. Some say much larger numbers practice in secret. I'm not doing it in secret. I'm doing it so you motherfuckers can see it. We're here at the palace of the Supreme Voodoo Leader, who's also referred to as a Voodoo Pope. He's about to induct Voodoo priests and priestesses from around the world as his representatives in their respective countries. Nous revenons, nous demandons humblement de continuer à nous permettre d'accompagner les frères et sœurs. 
What do you think is misunderstood about Voodoo? Le Voodoo est universel. Ce n'est pas les noirs seulement qui sont les enfants du Voodoo. Partout dans le monde entier, il y a le Voodoo. Une fois que l'air se manifeste dans n'importe quel religion, et dans n'importe quelle région, donc il y a le Voodoo. Le Voodoo est basé sur les quatre éléments de la nature. Il y a l'air, l'eau, le feu et la terre. L'air, sans l'air, nous ne pouvons pas respirer. Et si l'air s'est coupé pour cinq minutes, que devient l'actif de l'humanité. So what's your primary objective? Are you trying to raise awareness, trying to get more initiates into the religion? Mon objectif principal, c'est que... After becoming a French possession in 1697, Haiti soon became America's biggest producer of sugar and also one of the places with the highest number of slaves in the world. Plantations have been converted into museums with enormous stills that are still in the rum, presses where the juice of the sugar cane was extracted, and raised tanks where the fruits of slave labor were kept. Slave labor carried out under the constant cracking of the land. The living conditions of the Africans confined in these yards were atrocious. After suffering the hardships of a voyage, when only 20% of the slaves died, they arrived at the auctions exhausted and ill. Families were separated and the individual members were sold to different settlers. Parents and children would never meet again. 
and the overseers meted out severe punishments to those who did not work flat out, and the hundreds of fugitive slaves subjected their prisoners to exemplary treatment, which often resulted in death. Many succumbed to the wounds caused by heavy shackles or dehydrated in the sun, whilst changed to these sinister crosses. Slavers would unload their ebony merchandise as they owned their found smelling load of dying slaves that survived the voyage. Today it is one of the most beautiful colonial cities of Haiti. Its houses speak loudly of the opulent past of the French settlers who managed the sugar plantations. By the end of the 18th century, the black population had reached about 3 million and there were ever-increasing problems controlling them. The blacks that escaped, known as browns, hid in the mountains and organized themselves in very large rebel groups. The rumors about the French Revolution gave new strength to the rebels. Bookman, the leader of the browns, organized a great secret ceremony in Wakaiman. That night, on the 14th of August, 1791, a black pig was sacrificed to All Orion, right. welcome! The revolution of these slaves had begun. The message was very clear. Cut off heads, burn houses, and destroy plantations. In a few days, more than a thousand whites were killed. The terrified white settlers started the legend that the blacks had made a pact with the devil that night in Wakaiman. Many slaves were captured and executed. The brown at Macandal was burnt alive, so becoming a legendary martyr who is still called on in voodoo ceremonies today. Toussaint Louverture became the leader of the blacks and started a rebellion that lasted for 10 years until on the 1st of January 1804, Haiti proclaimed its independence, so becoming the first black republic in the new world. Two years later, General Henri Christophe proclaimed himself king and constructed the citadel of the north, while in Latin, Etienne, took control of the south. The construction of this enormous fortress built to defend them from the French, who never came back, took 14 years. Each stone had to be transported by hand up to a site that was 980 meters above sea level. 20,000 people died during its construction. The story goes that Christophe ordered that those who refused to work should be impaled against the enormous walls of the citadel. It could house up to 10,000 people, and its geographical situation made it virtually impregnable. King Christophe built up an arsenal of more than 250,000 cannonballs for the various types of cannons that he had installed in hundreds of embrasures. The citadel the largest fortress in the Caribbean, was left anchored in the mountains as a testimony to the struggle of the Haitian people for their independence. The landscape of the north contrasts with the idea that one may have of Haiti as an arid land. In this region, where King Christophe still seems to reign, the forests are luxuriant and leafy and full of life. Christophe ordered the palace of Saint Souci to be built near the citadel in the style of Frederick II of Prussia. In 1820, at the foot of the palace stairs near the church, the eccentric king ended his own life by shooting himself with a golden bullet fired from his silver revolver. He had oppressed his subjects to such a degree. That's right. 
the golden bullet for the subjects. It, that they rose up against him and forced him to commit suicide. <laughs> of the nation at the top of the hill near Cape Haitien. The Buddha phenomenon was born during this period of struggle in spite of the colonial authorities and repression of the church. The African guards that traveled in the slaves' minds had intermingled with the Catholic doctrine of the centers. A new religion had been born. And that new religion that has been born, has been voodoo. The practice of voodoo. Just know that we practice voodoo. Come to y'all in love. I leave y'all in peace. This is the coffin of voodoo that locks up evil and demonic spirits we trap the evil you trap it you make sure you contain it all the evil this is a cleansing of what's around you keep the evil and the demonic spirits away that they may live in love, peace and harmony. This is the breaking of the curse. This is what you call voodoo. The Omega Sapphire. Q dogs. Woo! Ah ha, gotcha, didn't I? See, fraternity too. I'm out.